Today I'm going to demonstrate how to access the school and public transport tender documentation on PCS Tender, how to complete your tender and how to submit your bid through the website. As a supplier, it is likely you will want to be notified and alerted to future public sector tender opportunities. If you have not already done so, please also register on www.publiccontractscotland.gov.uk and complete your supplier alert profile. PCS Tender provides a more consistent tendering experience for suppliers, enabling you to store answers to standard questions. Before we get started, I would like to draw your attention to the PCS Tender help guide and guidance videos. If you have never used PCS Tender before, we would highly recommend that you view these, as they will guide you through the registering process and help you set up your profile. You can find the PCS Tender website at www.publictenderscotland.publiccontractscotland.gov.uk. Locate the Supplier Help and Guidance button on the left-hand side of the page and select. Here you will find the Video Help Files and the Supplier Response Guide. To return to the login screen, click here. Once you have successfully registered with PCS Tender, you will be able to log in to access the site. You will be presented with a simple screen with a few different menu options. As a supplier registered on PCS Tender, you can proactively answer some standard questions in your extended profile area by way of the Manage My Profile menu option. If you do complete your extended profile, the answers to some standardised questions will become pre-populated when you come to complete your tender. It is your responsibility to ensure that the answers you have provided are relevant, accurate and up-to-date, and you must edit or change any pre-populated answers which are not correct prior to submitting your response. If you have already expressed an interest in a tender, or have been invited to submit, Go to My ITTs in the Already Participating box. If this is the first time you are looking for a particular tender, go to the ITT box and click on ITTs open to all suppliers. For the purposes of this demonstration, I will use a fictional supplier profile for a supplier who's not completed their extended profile. You will then be presented with a large list similar to this one. To find a specific ITT within the list, you can use the search filter function to search for the school and public transport project. After selecting the search filter button, you will see a search box with a drop down menu attached. Although you can choose any option to search by, we would recommend that you search by the project code. This will bring up all of the ITTs associated with the School and Public Transport project. In this case, you will only see one option. Select this option to continue. Clicking on the ITT will bring up an overview page for that ITT, similar to the one shown here. Click on the Express Interest button to access all of the tender documentation. You will then see a notice appear on the page. This notice is asking you to click OK to confirm your interest in this ITT. Click the OK button to continue. You will then see another dialog box confirming that you now have access to all the tender documentation. Again, click OK to continue. This will take you to the main project page. Please notice this warning in red near the top of the page. If you click on the warning, you'll be taken to the buyer attachment area. The buyer attachment area will show you a list of folders containing any documents pertaining to this tender. Download these documents, read them and store them on your computer. These documents contain useful information on how evaluation and selection will take place, as well as additional helpful guidance on how to respond. 
To download the documents, click on the folders to open. You will see a list of documents in that folder. Click on the documents individually and you'll see an option to save the document to your computer. I recommend creating a folder on your desktop and saving all of the documents to it so it's easy to locate when you need them. You can also access these documents by the main project page by selecting Buyer Attachments from the ITT Details menu on the left hand side of your screen. Return back to the main project page by selecting My Responses on the left hand side of your page. You will see a summary page of all the questions you will be asked in this ITT and you can scroll down to see all of the questions. Any responses you provide will be populated here. If you have taken the time to complete your extended profile section, some of these questions will be pre-populated with the answers you have provided there. You must make sure that these answers are accurate. To get started, click on the Create Response box. Again, read any message boxes that appear. These will be helpful. Your screen will change slightly and you'll now see a button that allows you to edit your response. You will also see a section called My Response Summary. The My Response Summary box has been separated into three parts, the Qualification Response, Technical Response and Commercial Response. Each of these sections will need to be answered fully before you can submit your response. This section will also tell you if you have failed to answer any mandatory questions. Mandatory questions are indicated by a red star before the question. If this star is present, you must answer the question. The system will not allow you to submit your tender if you fail to answer these. Click on the Edit Response button to start. The screen you will see will be similar to the previous one, but now you are able to complete or amend your responses. If you do complete any responses, remember to save them. You can save and come back to the form later if you need to. The page you see may look quite daunting due to all the writing you see on it, but you will notice that some of these lines are questions that you should answer, but a lot of the writing is guidance in order to help you answer the questions correctly. Please read all of the information provided carefully. There are a few different types of answers that you can provide. Drop down selection menus where you can select from the options provided. Free form text boxes where you can type anything within that box. Please note the character limit. You will not be able to type more than is allowed in these boxes. There are date boxes where you click on the calendar and select the appropriate date. Selection boxes where you will click on all the options that apply to you. File attachment questions. These are used where we ask to see copies of your documentation such as insurance or licenses. Click on the click to attach file button. Select Browse to search your computer for the appropriate documents. Once you have found the document you want, double click on it and select Confirm to upload the document to your submission. The document will now appear where the Click to Attach File button used to be. If you accidentally uploaded the wrong document, select the Delete button. If you see this paperclip symbol next to the question number, this indicates there is a document attached to the question that you must download first, then complete. In order to open the attached document, click on the paperclip symbol. Follow the same procedure for saving the documents as you have done previously.
Once you have downloaded these documents, go to where you have saved them on your computer, open them and complete them. When you have completed them, remember to save the amended document. and then go back to your submission and upload them as you did with previous attachments. Once you have completed all the questions in the ITT, scroll to the top of the page. Here you will see a validate response button. If you click on this button, the system will check that you have answered all of the mandatory questions and will show you where they are if you have missed any. It will also highlight the question itself. Once you have ensured you have completed all of the questions, save and exit. You will be taken back to the summary page and now be able to see your responses populated in the response column on the right hand side of the page. You have now completed section 1, the qualification response. To complete section 2, the technical response, scroll down the page until you get to 2, technical response and click on the edit response button. Follow the same process as before to answer all of the questions. Remember to validate your response to ensure you have answered all of the mandatory questions and then save and exit. You have now completed sections 1 and 2, the qualification and technical responses. In order to complete section 3, the commercial response, scroll down underneath the technical response section that you just completed until you come across 3, commercial response, and click on the edit response button. Here is an example of a commercial response section. In this example, you see three questions that have a paperclip symbol attached. As with the previous sections, if you see this symbol, it indicates that there is a document attached to the question that you will need to download, complete, and then upload. For the school and public transport framework agreement tender, you will only see one question with a document attached. Follow the same procedure as seen previously in order to download the document and save it to your computer. Again, I would recommend creating a new folder so you are able to find the document quickly. Locate the file that you just saved and open the document. Remember to enable editing in order to input your pricing. Please read all of the additional guidance that is provided for you. And remember to save your document once you have input your pricing. To upload your completed pricing schedule, return to the Commercial Response folder and locate the Add View Attachments button. Go to the Upload New File button. Browse your computer for the appropriate document and upload as you have done previously. Remembering to confirm your upload and save the upload. Once you have completed uploading your pricing schedule, you can go back to the commercial envelope to ensure that your pricing schedule is now shown as an attachment. Please ensure that your pricing schedule has been successfully uploaded with your submission. If your pricing schedule has not been uploaded, we will not be able to come back to you. If a pricing schedule is not included, your submission will be set aside. You will notice that your response summary box at the top of the page now indicates that you only have optional responses missing. 
If you had mandatory responses missing, the system would not allow you to submit your response. If you have optional responses missing, you will still be able to submit successfully, so please ensure that you have answered all the optional responses that apply to you. If you are not satisfied with what you have input, you can either go back into Edit Response and amend your responses, or you can click on Delete Response, which will clear all of your responses and allow you to start again from scratch. If you are happy with your response, click on the Submit Response box. Remember to read all the advice boxes that pop up and click OK to continue. To confirm that your response has been submitted successfully to us, you can return back to the main menu and go to My ITTs, where you will see a list of all of the ITTs that you have expressed an interest in. You will notice that in the Response Status column, it now says Response Submitted to Bio. If you get stuck or need any advice, you can contact us directly through the PCS Tender website by way of the message box on the left-hand side of the page. By selecting Messages, you will find a drop-down menu which will allow you to create a message and send it directly to the Highland Council. Select the appropriate drop-down from the message classification box, enter a subject and enter your message, and then press send. We will reply to your message as soon as we can. When we do reply, you will see it in your received messages folder.